I have the power. And here's the TiVo tornado. Before we check out the tornado, let's check out this model. This is He-Man's sword, modeled by Askewed View 3 d a fellow YouTuber. They model all of these from scratch, and they do three a week. This one was printed in Inland PLA. I did have to use two different spools and they weren't the same shade, but it still turned out pretty well. This was printed on the Tornado in two pieces and I glued them together. It's right at 700 millimeters long. A great job to Sholm and the boys. Keep up the good work. I'll put the link to the He-Man video up here and the link to their My Mini Factory and their Thingiverse pages in the description below. Now back to your regularly scheduled review. The TiVo Tornado is a Cartesian aluminum extrusion large build volume type of machine. It has a 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume. It has a Titan clone extruder with a Bowden tube, a V6-ish hot end, a part cooling fan, an AC powered heat bed, a single Z lead screw, and a sidecar box for all the electronics. The Tornado and I have been on an interesting adventure to say the least. I've printed a lot of stuff as you can see, some with success, some not so much. After a few tweaks here and there, I am able to get pretty consistent results out of this machine, but it's been a really long road. So let's get into it. I like the AC powered heat bed. It heats from 20C to 100C in about three minutes. The bed construction is also very sturdy and pretty consistent. There are a few lumpy spots, but nothing that bad. The build sheet that they give you to print on also seems to be very durable and they give you a spare. The Titan Extruder clone on this machine is interesting. This is the first one of these I've ever had, but it seems to be doing a good job. This machine also does have only one single Z lead screw, but it doesn't seem to impact performance at all. The price is also right for a machine this size. I've seen it for as low as $325 US. Now let's walk down a road of what I would call challenges. The Tornado's bolts do need a little tightening here and there, but that's probably to be expected for a machine of this type. During the first print, the bolt that holds the extruder gear started to rotate and back out. I was able to tighten it back up while printing, so problem averted. During the live stream, I printed this vase at 200% speed. You can see where there's some missed lines and a little bit of inconsistency, but I thought that was probably because of the speed, so I wanted to try again at 100%. This is the same model at 100% speed, and you can see all those inconsistencies are gone. Next, I wanted to move to a model that was even taller, so I printed this vase model, but I tried twice before I actually got a successful print. Both of the first tries turned out like this, and I thought, what's going on? Is there something wrong with the printer? But it turned out to be a problem with the STL file, so I re-sliced it, and it worked out fine. During the end of this vase print, you can see that the nozzle rubbed on the top of the model, creating some inconsistent layers. At the time, I wasn't sure what was causing this, but I considered maybe it was just a fluke and I continued testing. And you can start to see the salmon skin effect on this model. More on that in a little bit. Then I moved on to this commercially licensed spacecraft, and I got this. A couple of very interesting layer skips. You can see the shift right here. At this point, that's when I start thinking we really need to figure this out. You can see that layer shift was in the Y axis. So I popped open the electronics box and I raised the Y stepper driver up to 0.95 volts. That seemed to fix the shift. This is the same model after the first stepper driver change and it completed successfully. Looks pretty good. Now let's talk about the He-Man sword. We're gonna need some room for this. So this was my first attempt at the He-Man sword. I was shooting for around 350 millimeters in height. And this is what I ended up with. I'm amazed that it didn't fall over altogether. In hindsight, this should have been my first clue that something was not right. But I pressed on and I tried again. This was my second attempt. Obviously, I thought I wasn't failing fast enough, so I went ahead and scaled it. Now you can see the layer shift is back. On to the third attempt. I flipped the model over and there's support all around this piece of the model, so I couldn't see the layer shift at the beginning. It did complete, but still a really wicked layer shift. The handle turned out good and so did the blade, but still a failure. So at this point, I'm more than frustrated with the He-Man sword and I'm burning up filament, so I decided to switch over to another model and I went with the Joel Telling spacecraft. 
First try of the spacecraft, crazy layer shift. You can see it around the base and towards the top. So one more time, I open up the electronics box and I go for broke. I set the Y stepper driver all the way to 1.1 volts, and then I try the spaceship again. We achieve spaceship success. No layer shift, all the layer lines look pretty good. There's a little bit of the salmon skin, but all around, a nice model. Sticking with the red filament, I decided to create the biggest Chris's Basement Maker Coin that the tornado could handle. Turned out pretty good. Now that I've had a few successful prints, it's time to go back to the He-Man sword. Time number four. Which brings us to this attempt, where the whole model fell over mid-print. Then I try another time. The blade falls over and ruins the print. At this point, I'm not really sure what's going on here. I've had some success, I've had some failures, but I don't know what's causing these models to fall over or fail. Then I try this dragon model. It never finished the wing. The hot end actually got stuck to this part of the wing, taking some of the captain tape and that fiber material with it. I woke up to find this model on the floor. After that failure, I printed out this tugboat. It came out really well. It looks pretty good. I also printed out one of Colin's robots. You can check these guys out over at his channel. Now back to the He-Man sword. At this point, I decide I'm going to go for broke. I've had some success. I'm going to print the blade in one print and the handle in another and just see how big I can go. I tried the blade first and I ended up with this. It got stuck on top of the model. This point is where I had my aha moment. I took a really close look at the Z lead screw and noticed it was just a little off. So I decided to take the bearing off the top and see how straight it actually was. And this is what the rod looked like when I actually removed the bearing. You can see the rod is actually a little bit further to the right than the rod holder is at the top. So with that information, I was able to just slide the top rod holder a little bit to the right, put it all back together, and then success. I completed the He-Man sword, glued it together, and it looks great. So it seems you need to be a little more diligent with your pre-flight checks on this machine, and the Y carriage mass is just about at maximum of what that stepper driver can handle. But issues solved. TiVo does have an online support system that you can use, although I don't have any experience with it. They do offer spare parts on their site, and you can download copies of Marlin for these machines. Here's what the inside of the controller box looks like. The main board looks to be maybe an MKS type, and here's your SSR for your AC heated bed. The AC heat bed is a really nice feature, but might get really interesting if you had a wire failure. So be extra careful here. One thing that really does annoy me on this printer are these print bed knobs. They are way too tight, and if you use this machine a lot, you're gonna to wanna to print out some better ones. They could lighten up these springs a little. I also had an issue where the firmware wouldn't start up a couple of times. If I'd let it set for a while and then come back again, it would eventually come back on. And finally, the salmon skin. You can see it right in here. You see it on a lot of prints. You can add TL smoothers, diodes basically, to your X and Y motors to get help with this, so it can mostly be resolved, but you have to take extra steps and buy some more parts. So let's recap. The bed heats quickly, it's well priced, it has a large build volume, and the build platform's pretty good. It also comes in a pretty cool color. This machine is sold as an almost completely built printer, but as you saw, I had to do a lot of tweaking to get it to perform as expected. This could be frustrating for users, especially beginners. The AC power being outside of the control box could also be a real concern. A 12 volt DC heat bed is going to be a lot slower, but it's going to be a lot safer in the long run. The firmware startup issues that I had, I'm just going to chalk that up to a one-off. And then there is the salmon skin artifacts that's prominent on pretty much every model. This could be a real turnoff for a lot of people. With so many larger scale 3D printers like this one on the market today, in my opinion, there really isn't any room for these types of inconsistencies that I saw on this printer. Not when you can go buy a machine that's around the same size and the same price that outperforms this one right out of the box. If I was looking to buy one of these 3D printers, I'd probably skip the Tornado and look at some of the other options. I've not been in contact with TiVo or GearBest on this machine. All opinions expressed are my own, and this machine was bought with my own funds. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.